Uh, my name is John Medved. It's great to be here in Southern California, West Los Angeles, maybe about two miles away from where I went to junior high school here at Paul Revere Junior High School. So this is, you know, the, the old country. And I'm in from Israel. I'm the CEO and founder of Our Crowd, which is the world's largest crowdfunding platform for startups. What we do is we provide funding and assistance to entrepreneurs who want to build world-changing startups. Um, we're here today at the American Israel Medical Association, which is a group of people who are focused on the Israeli healthcare and medical area. Many of these people are investors who are potential members or already members of our crowd, and others are entrepreneurs. So we're meeting a little bit of both. We're going to be talking about the incredible changes that are happening in Israel in terms of our ability to create literally world-leading technologies in rehabilitation, in fighting cancer, in robotic surgery, in virtual reality, in big data, in machine learning. And um, Israel just continues to rocket and we're very, very blessed to be living in the startup nation. Uh, good things are happening and we're just getting started. How are the opportunities for people to invest in Israeli uh, ventures through our crowd? So it's really easy. All you got to do is go to ourcrowd.com. Every week there are new opportunities that are available. You have to be an accredited investor. So you have to have, according to the SEC, a million dollars of investable assets outside of your home. But there are about 14 million households in America who meet that criteria. So I'm sure many of your viewers meet that. And if they do, or even if they don't, they can certainly go to our site and look at the information. But to invest, you have to be accredited. But once you are accredited, then the minimum investment is $10,000. So it's not like a, a crazy amount of money. We urge you to build a portfolio so that you don't just bet on one great idea, but you take a, a very responsible approach. Typically, you should put about 10 of these investments together. We give you an ability to do so by either investing in a fund. So for example, we have a fund called Cure with a Q, which is Israel's first digital health fund, where if you believe that the most important medical device is in your pocket and it's called a cell phone, okay, then you might want to take a look at our crowd Cure, uh, which has got you know digital vaccines for diabetes uh, and a bunch of other very, very cool things in the digital health area. We have other investments here which we'll be talking about, such as surgical theater, who are doing virtual reality for brain surgeons so that they can actually visualize what they're going to see when they open your head up. Probably a good idea. It was brought to you by Israeli flight simulation engineers combined with U.S. brain surgeons. We've got a company called Zebra Medical, which is doing machine learning for automated interpretation of radiological images so that when you actually get a scan, a machine can help your radiologist better understand what's going on with you from the MRI or the CT. A company called Metaware, which is preventing prescription error at hospitals. In clinical trials at Harvard Medical School, they found that almost 4% of the prescriptions at Harvard were wrong. And so this company is going to prevent those mistakes from uh, hurting you uh, and, and saving money by doing so. And those are just some of the companies. Intuition Robotics, which is the world's first elder care robot, so that your grandmother can be you know, kept company and stay in touch and take her medicines better because this robot is there helping from the, uh, the, the, the great technology out of Israel. And most important, a bunch of rehab companies. We have a company called Rewalk where we invested, went public, and now the son of Rewalk is a company called Up and Ride from the same founder, which is building for quadriplegics. It looks like a wheelchair meets a Segway, and it gets people who are quads up and riding. How does this kind of innovation in technology sell around the world against the, uh, the boycott and uh, 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 sanctions movement against uh, Israel and Israeli products? The answer is it sells very well because nobody gives a hoot about the boycott. The boycott is almost non-existent. 
it's Jewish paranoia, and we have a right to be paranoid. We don't like boycotts. But the reality in the field is that in places like China or India or Japan or Korea or Africa or South America and most parts of the U.S. and Europe, Israel and Israeli technology is a positive brand. Everybody wants a Jewish doctor and they want Israeli medicine. Okay, you got to be a nutcase to not do that. So when people, you know, they say there are no atheists in the birthing room or in the hospital foxhole, okay, there are no boycotters when your life is at stake. You want good technology to save your life, you come to Israel. So in the medical area, there simply is not, none of the above. It doesn't, it doesn't affect us and we don't see it at, at all as a factor. You moved to Israel when? 36 years ago. What year was it? 1980. And people thought that you were probably crazy to stay there when so many people come back after five years, right? Yeah, well, I, I, it, it worked out pretty well for me. I, I, I'm very, very fortunate to live in Israel. Got a wonderful family, wonderful wife, four kids, seven grandchildren. Um, my, I have the best job in the world. My, I mean, my job is to let people pitch me ideas and get a chance to be a, a midwife or you know, some kind of an Ezer Konegdo uh, helpmate, okay, to help people realize their dreams and to let other people join in, you know, through the crowdfunding mechanism. I mean, it doesn't get better than this. And to be able to tell Israel's story, whether it's to YouTube or to CNN or to CNBC, th that's an added benefit. And I just feel blessed and energized by what's going on. Now, many people have seen on YouTube an Isra young Israeli couple who've been singing with the ukulele uh, and doing uh, uh, great things for uh, uh, both Jewish pride and, uh, and, and Zionist recognition. Have you heard of these people? I think you might be referring to my daughter and her husband, uh, who go by the name of Yonina, who are uh, Facebook and YouTube stars, um, doing a lot of you know, Jewish music and Jewish education. I'm very proud of them. Did you have to send her for piano lessons and sit while the lessons? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We, uh, she was musical from age two and three. We have tapes of her dancing and singing at those ages, and this is sort of expected, and we're very pleased with her success. And uh, I get a lot of nachat from uh, watching my daughter and her husband. Well, I think all the Jewish people, knowing that this is an Israeli-American, American-Israeli family and the, and the boy your your son-in-law he's uh, from an american family as well yoni so uh yoni tokayer so N nina and yoni tokayer yonina go check them out they've got a great new clip up for sukkot which is a mashup of visamachta bechagecha and feral uh you know williams uh, happy so uh it's pretty pretty interesting go check it out on facebook or youtube Thank you. you. Great work you guys do at YouTube. Continue, please. Thank you very much. Good. Mutual.